Main engine start, one, zero, and lift off. If the U.S. citizen wants the U.S. to stay in a world leadership role in space exploration, you have to have radioisotope power systems. On November 25th, a window opens and it allows us to launch the Mars Science Laboratory. Now that particular mission will land a rover called Curiosity on the surface of Mars. It uses radioisotope power because it has to, has to be able to operate through the winter, uh, it could potentially operate through the night, and it goes into the regions where there are low sunlight uh, conditions, and so it therefore needs its power supply to operate. A radioisotope power system is a kind of nuclear power system which uses the natural decay heat of a radioisotope, or in this case plutonium-238, to generate electricity, which can be used by a spacecraft. That's important because it enables us then to run experiments, charge batteries, survive the night. We can use the heat from these systems to keep everything at a particular temperature that allows it to survive. And because of that, then enables certain missions that we could have never done using traditional solar power. The first nuclear-powered satellite was launched in 1961. It was the Navy's Transit 4A satellite. It was used by the Navy as a predecessor to today's Global Positioning Systems satellite network. They were first developed under the Atoms for Peace initiative under President Eisenhower. First, encourage worldwide investigation into the most effective peacetime uses of fissionable material. And the first public introduction to a radioisotope thermoelectric generator was in President Eisenhower's Oval Office. Since then, we've launched over 27 missions using nuclear power systems in outer space. So then NASA began using RTGs to enable their deep space exploration for about a decade. And during this time, there were some changes back here on Earth the Energy Research Development Agency became the Department of Energy. And since then, the Department of Energy with NASA have teamed up to produce long-lasting, reliable power systems for deep space exploration. We've had generators on the moon. They've done flybys of Venus, Uranus, and Neptune. The Galileo mission uh, to Jupiter. We're currently orbiting Saturn with the Cassini spacecraft, New Horizons, going to Pluto, supposed to arrive there about 2015. And then there's the Voyagers 1 and 2. The Voyager space probes launched in 1977 are still operating today because of their radioisotope thermoelectric generators. The space probes are over 11 billion miles from Earth and are entering the very fringes of our solar system. As we look at these objects and study them, we really determine that there are places in the solar system where life might actually exist well beyond the boundaries of our Earth. Radioisotope power systems enable our understanding of the outer solar system. It's just not imaginable how little of space around us we've explored. There's just a continual array of ideas and concepts, uh, many of which have been delineated in our strategic plan that we would like to see executed over the next 10 years. And they can only be done if we have radioisotope power.